Hi everyone, I'm Carmen from New Leaf Designs and today, uh, I don't want to call this a podcast episode, but I want to do a short video, or who knows if it's going to be short, <laughs> um, about three sock patterns. The third one, I'm just finishing up a sample, so I'm just um, finishing... Um, sewing the end in on the bind off and there is still an end here in uh, in the toe so three patterns and i want to talk about some stuff happening in the knitting community over the past weekend actually so um but first let me talk about the socks these are the foot spa socks the free pattern is on my website today and they are called the Foot Spa Socks because these socks, I designed them to, to wear directly after you, you know, get out of the bath or a shower and you dry off and your feet are still kind of wet. And you know, when you shower, there's always going to be some drops, some droplets on the floor or it's, it's going to be slippery or whatever. And I... Maybe, maybe it's just me, but I really don't like it if I've just dried off my feet and I step outside of the bathtub and the floor is kind of wet too. And it's like, ugh, I, I don't like feeling wet floor underneath my feet. Anyway, maybe, maybe I'm just too particular about that. But these socks are perfect to wear after the bath. So, um, when I got out of the... <laughs> Maybe this is getting too personal. So, um, uh, you know, I like for my feet to dry before I put on socks because, I don't know, I don't think it's very healthy if you put socks on right away and kind of stop the, the air from getting to your feet and, you know, drying your feet. Um, but with these, so uh, I do really like to put on thick socks. Uh, that can kind of absorb the extra moisture um, and also uh, that are kind of rough because it feels really nice on my skin. So these socks, I've made them with Scapius Mighty, which is a blend of, uh, I think, 68% cotton. So it's mostly cotton and then 32% jute. <laughs> Jute? <laughs> J-U-T-E. <laughs> I don't really know how to pronounce it. It's like uh, like a different word for burlap. Um, yeah, and that's just, just jute. But um, anyway, so it's kind of a scratchy fiber. Um, and it kind of feels like linen, I want to say. Uh, I don't know if, if it softens up like linen does. But it does feel much much softer than I had thought it would be but it's just one of those fabrics that feels amazing on your skin uh, especially your feet because you know that something might not feel soft to your um, you know to your face or to your arms or hands uh, but it does feel uh, soft to your feet and also I knit in this extra like texture pattern and also on the sole of the foot, usually I only do a texture or a lace pattern on the top of the foot so that you don't walk on it. But for this sock, it's, you know, it's part of the reason why this is so nice to wear is that you have the texture pattern on the sole of your feet as well. And it kind of helps exfoliate skin and, you know, if you, um... Um, if you put foot balm on, on your feet, uh, I, I like to put loads on. And then when I want to put on regular socks, it will just soak through and yeah, it wouldn't really be nice. But with these, these are thick enough and it kind of, the texture powder helps massage it into your feet. So I'm just, I love these and <laughs> I've actually also worn them in the bath so that might be a little crazy but they're like wearable washcloths <laughs> but be sure to wash them inside out after every use because yeah you want to get the dead skin off and stuff 
I hope I'm not grossing you out with this, but anyway, so these are my Futspa socks. The pattern is out today. It's free on my blog. Um, this is, I would say, a DK weight sock. Uh, I've used one ball of Scapies Mighty for each sock, uh, but I have a, re a relatively small shoe size, so you might need uh, three balls in total. So I use two, you might need, need three. Um, the pattern is for six adult sizes, so, and I think you can do it with other DK sock yarn as well. Um, I have not included gauge, mainly because, you know, you just start at the toe and after you've knit like a couple centimeters, it's about the equivalent of a gauge swatch. Just try it on, see if it's too big or too snug. The texture pattern, it really uh, is kind of stretchy, so just try it on, see if it works. Um, and the texture pattern is really easy. It's one round of ribbing and one round of stock nut, and that is it. Um, and I'm also doing a little bonus pattern where I'm knitting the same stitch flat. So you'll have to wait for that little pattern. But it's just a really, really nice uh, texture. So, um, yeah, those are my foot spa socks. And now I'm working on two lace sock patterns. So the first one you will have already seen if you've watched my podcast before because I have shown it. Um, and I don't know if I've ever knit, if I've ever designed knit lace socks before, I don't think so. Um, so these are also toe up. Uh, I've done a little gusset and then a shorter heel and a heel flap. And then after that, you do the lace pattern in the round. Um, it's only a short leg, um, but I think it looked really, really nice. And then I did a uh, one by two ribbing, I think. So knit one, purl two so that it kind of continues from the lace pattern. And I kind of wish I did a twisted rib here because I think that would have looked better. So that's what I'm doing on the second one. Um, this pattern is not out yet. I'm still debating whether to uh, release these as a lace set or separately. So um, yeah, I'm still debating what I should do. Um, so this one hasn't been blocked yet. I've just uh, cast off a few minutes before <laughs> starting this video. Um, so I've made these, so they're almost knee high, at least for me, I know I have short legs, but for me they're almost knee high. And let me just weave in this end so that it's out of the way. So I weave it in into the column of knit stitches on the inside. Um, and I would have made them higher, I think. I could have made them above the knee, but I only have two balls of this. And I've knit this one sock with one ball. So it's Scapies Metropolis. This one is made with Scapies Metropolis as well. Um, and this one's Scapius Mighty, if I didn't mention that. So Scapius Metropolis is 75% merino, 25% nylon, it's super wash. So it's, it's a standard sock yarn. Um, it's 400 meters per 100 grams. But these are 50 gram balls, so each have uh, 200 meters. Uh, you can wash them. Uh, you can throw them in the, in the dryer, although I haven't tried that um, to put it in the dryer. But... I really, really like this, and this is colorway uh, Copenhagen 66, and I think this is Olsan um, number 15, I think. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so I, I used one entire ball for this, and this is a different lace pattern. kind of uh, chevrons 
and I've also done, so I've done the same heel. So it's toe up, has a little pearl ridge here, which I also have on these socks. And then a little gusset, uh, shorter heel, and then heel flap, and then you knit the lace pattern and the round. I have not done any increases, uh, but this lace pattern is especially stretchy. Um, and so I did not have to do any increases. I think you could do, um, I think you could just increase your uh, needle size. So I've knit all of this on 2.25 millimeter needles. I could have gone up to the uh, 2.5 for this and then back to 2.25 for the ribbing because you want to kind of cinch that back in. Because this is kind of, you can see because I've tried it on, this is kind of where my calf uh, gets wider and then just before the knee it cinches back in right so you don't you don't want it to be wide there um, and I'll be wearing it over tights um, so one you can see the lace pattern better and two um, it will less like it's less likely to like sag on your um, on your legs because I do have some other knee highs and when I just wear them on my bare legs they kind of droop so um, and I do have a solution for that because I have a little bottle of latex I think it's the same it's the same thing that's like on the sole of kids socks uh, like little droplets uh, kind of like to, to stop them from sliding about and so I have a little bottle of that and I plan to like put some drops on the inside of the ribbing so it kind of holds it up so I'm planning to do that but uh, let me just show you what it looks like on because right now it kind of looks like mm, okay well it's a sock but I love it when it's on so let me show you Okay, so you have to bear with me for the sound of this because it's going to be a little bit different. But see how nice it is. And I'm wearing some darker tights underneath so you can see the actual lace pattern. And I think it would be really nice to wear this type of sock with heels. And I really like just, you know, the, the gusset and the heel. I think it fits really nicely. And lace is always very stretchy, so um, yeah, it fits really nice. So yeah, I will be working on the pattern and the second sock, of course. Ta-da! So yes, I will be working on this pattern and this one so um and i'm still on the fence about whether i want to have them as a collection so a bundle together uh, or to have them as separate patterns i'm leaning towards having them as separate patterns uh, but that you kind of get a discount if you buy both of them and I wanted to show you, um, I got some new sock blockers, and they are gorgeous. Um, I went uh, away with my family for the weekend, and we did our holiday gifts exchange, um, and I asked for these sock blockers. And... <laughs> well now you just see the socks but the the blockers they are so beautiful and I just um, you know I have functional sock blockers I have you know plastic ones but they are not nice to display socks when I go to craft fairs for example I'm dreaming of having a booth with just all of my samples just like I had at Creadu this year with Scapius and they had some wooden sock blockers uh, so that I could display my socks and I just loved that um, 
and they are so pretty and um, so they are from Etsy and they are from Emlyn Gidro. <laughs> I wrote down the name uh, maybe I'll let's see if this focuses and otherwise I'll put it on the screen maybe I'll do that anyway this uh, maker is from Poland and um, yeah they have amazing products so not only sock blockers but also mittens and I think even glove blockers so you have a separate blocker thing for each finger um, yeah and this is size M and I'm using these for European size 36 37 um, socks and you know that you know knitted socks are always a bit larger than store-bought socks in um, or at least they seem like that I think because store-bought socks have way more stretch in them so um, this seems a little big compared to my actual feet but um, yeah for the knitted socks they work perfectly and especially to block out all of the stitches it makes it look really really smooth and I can't wait to put some color work socks on this because for color work it's especially nice to um, to block everything so yeah those are the three socks that I wanted to share <laughs> So this one is out today for the lace ones. You have to wait a little bit. I am thinking of calling these the cottage dream socks because it just sounds so dreamy and I'm into cottage core at the moment uh, and of calling these my woodsy socks. So thinking of that. So but who knows. So I will keep you updated on that. Be sure to follow me here on YouTube to subscribe, to follow me on Instagram and my newsletter, you know, any one of those will do. You don't have to follow me everywhere. And now I, I just really want to talk a little bit about what's happening in the knitting community this week or this weekend. I don't know if you've heard about Christy Glass, um, you know, what she said. Um, so if you're in the knitting community and if you're um, like me, you're following uh, makers from all around the world, so not just the Netherlands or, or whatever country you're from, but also uh, from other countries, you will probably know Christy Glass. I think a lot of Dutch crafters may not know her, uh, but um, it's, it's like uh, she goes to yarn shows and she interviews people. She has, um, uh, like she's, she doesn't design anything herself or dye yarn, but she's like a podcaster, an influencer. She has a really big following and, uh, she often has people on her show. And, um, to me it was always like, oh, if you've been on Christy Glass's show, you've made it, right? But now, um, things have come to light that, uh, through, just give a whole different perspective. So, uh, so if, if you've been in a knitting community for a while, and if you've kind of been keeping in touch with the news, <laughs> then you know that about, uh, two or three years ago, uh, there was this whole thing with, um, Oh, the woman who makes the XO, I forgot. So, uh, kind of something happened that kicked off this whole um, conversation about race and um, kind of white people discovered racism in the, in the knitting community or like, um, you know, for me as well, it opened my eyes for sure. Um, and there was a lot of conversation happening. There were a lot of tears. Um, and like very shortly after that happened, Christy Glass was like, okay, I'll have a bunch of um, people of color on, on my podcast. And I th she had this big video, I think it was called This Is Us or something. Um, and yeah. It felt a little bit so so it was like um 
racism 101 like okay what is gaslighting what uh what are the do's and don'ts if you talk to someone of color and um yeah the the conversation felt a bit weird but um so christy uh after that she went on to have people of color on her show regularly um and you know all all of the things she she knew how she knew what to say and what to do but uh due to some things that she said this weekend and due to stories of people um, you know from over the years we now know that she was just not genuine about any of that she was faking it um, so the story the the thing that kicked it off the straw that broke the camel's back was that she said some nasty things about or snarky things about Michelle Obama being on the cover of uh, Vogue Knitting um, like oh why isn't she wearing anything knitted um, and it was like dude <laughs> this is a very special moment why are you sh on it <laughs> like why are you um, oh, sorry that might have been a swear word but um, so and then uh, Adela from Lola Bean, uh, Lola Bean Yarn Co. Uh, um, Adela did a live video about like, whoa, what is this woman saying? Um, and oh, I don't know if I have the order of things right. So a lot of things happened uh, and Adela did a live video um, and she was so graceful and so patient and she was she said like okay um this is a straw that broke the camel's back um this is the drop <laughs> that flooded the bucket i don't know if that's just a dutch um saying but um uh and that she she needed to talk about some of the things that happened between christy and her um and and more and more stories came to light uh, about how Christy would uh, charge people to come on her podcast for I don't know how many minutes maybe it's 15 minutes maybe it's 30 minutes uh, so she would charge them 150 dollars to come on her show and there was an extra fee if you wanted the logo on her website while it's like you know as uh, if you if you have a podcast, I mean, um, sometimes there is an exchangement of money. Sometimes uh, people come on each other's podcasts, and that's kind of like how you <clears throat> compensate the other one. Um, but usually, if you have a podcast and you want to have a guest, you pay the guest. <laughs> It's not the guest that pays to be on your podcast. But uh, yeah, she did that and um, uh, she, I don't know if she asked everyone to, um, to pay that. And um, stories have shown, stories have now come to the light that she um, reached out to new black makers and black creators to come on her show and to charge them and that is just you know uh adela has um phrased it as collecting black people and people of color collecting them as pokemon like collecting them and uh exploiting them and uh i have to agree that it does really sound like that um, and then <laughs> it's it's as it's as if Christy Glass did not learn anything about her conversations over the past years she did everything <laughs> wrong <laughs> what what a white person can do so she she had the, okay first I think she was avoiding it and sure you have to collect your thoughts and don't say anything if 
if it's not constructive or, you know, um, I think about the things that CC says. So, um, is it kind? Is it necessary? Uh, does it improve on the silence? Um, and so silence is, you know, it's not always bad. Um, but then she wanted to post this non-apology about like, oh, I'm sorry, I asked questions about Michelle Obama. No, it's not about that anymore at all. That's just the last drop, you know? Um, but yeah. And then she posted private DMs between Adela and her, uh, I think aiming to show the world this is who Adela really is but it kind of just really proved Ad Adela's point actually and uh, what uh, Gay Glasty of GG Made It has said, what CC has said, what uh, Diane from Lady Diarns has said, what uh, uh, Laverne has said from um, Busy Peach <sighs> and uh, and then she, I think she limited comments and then she just deleted all of it. She deleted her Instagram. Um, I think she even deleted her YouTube channel. I don't know. But it's just the stories that have come to light have shown us that this is not a person making mistakes. This is truly a problematic person. And um, yeah, I wanted to talk about that because we cannot just see this and do nothing um and you better believe i'll be moderating those comments so don't go trolling here on my video on my video <laughs> um so yeah and if you want to know more about this please go ahead and watch the live video that uh adela posted from lola bean uh in her feed it's the one that has the cover of uh like little stickers with Lola on it and it says speak up in the caption. Uh, I've shared it on my stories as well but I'm sure that's already gone by now and um, if you go on the Instagram page of Lady Di Yarns, uh, Diane, she has uh, an Instagram live video with Cece and uh, I think it's it's the most recent video in her if you look on her IGTV um, in, the, in that column. Um, please go ahead and watch those videos and respect their space as well. Um, don't ask any questions that Google could answer for you or that, you know, you might be able to answer for yourself if you really think about it. Um, just listen, you know, always when black women speak up, <laughs> you better listen and you better believe them. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about it. I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, if you want to say anything, then please do leave a comment, but please do be mindful of what you're saying. And thank you if you've watched this. Um, and yeah, <laughs> it feels kind of weird because, you know, I want to share about, you know, I want to talk about my knitting and my stuff, but this is just, this cannot be separated. Um, you know, people will say, oh, you're getting political. Well, <laughs> everything's political. Um, okay. I'm just, I'm just going to leave it there uh, at that. I'll be back with some more videos this month. I don't know if I'll be doing Vlogmas, but I will be doing some videos. I have a yarn advent calendar that I'm dying to share. Um, so yeah, I'll be back with more videos. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!